There are a number of questions asked in the events of what we call Good Friday. They come from John 18. Then I'll share a short personal experience, after which we will hear John 19, 17 to 37, read from the Passion Translation. Who are you looking for? asked Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. Aren't you one of his disciples? They asked Peter beside the fire. Why would you ask me for evidence to condemn me? Jesus asked of Annas in the first part of his trial. Aren't you one of his disciples? I know you are, said a guard to Peter. Tell me, what exactly is the accusation that you bring against this man? What has he done? asked Pilate of the Jewish leaders. Are you really the king of the Jews? Pilate asked Jesus in the second part of his trial. Are you asking because you really want to know, or are you only asking this because others have said it about me? asked Jesus of Pilate, who responded, Only a Jew would care about this. Do I look like a Jew? It's your own people and your religious leaders that have handed you over to me. So tell me, Jesus, what have you done wrong? Jesus looked at Pilate and said, The royal power of my kingdom realm doesn't come from this world. If it did, then my followers would be fighting to the end to defend me from the Jewish leaders. My kingdom realm authority is not from this realm. And Pilate responded, Oh, so then you are a king. You are right, Jesus said. I was born a king, and I have come into this world to prove what truth really is. And everyone who loves the truth will receive my words. Pilate looked at Jesus and said, What is truth? Later, when the Jewish leaders tell Pilate that Jesus has claimed to be God, he was so shocked, and we read in Aramaic the translation, it says, his soul collapsed within him. As silence filled the room, Pilate went back out to where the Jewish leaders were waiting and said to them, He's not guilty. I couldn't even find one fault with him. Now, you do what you have as a custom. I release one prisoner every year at Passover. Shall I release your king, the king of the Jews? They shouted out over and over, No, not him. Give us Barabbas. Now, Barabbas was a robber and a troublemaker. And literally, the word in Aramaic means son of the father. I want you now to imagine a church sanctuary. It's in Belvedere in Kent. And the chairs are arranged in an oval with entry points at the compass points. The youth group has been asked to lead the evening service. And they wanted to share the Easter story following Peter and the trial of Jesus. All were following the story as each character arrived on the scene. When it came to Pilate offering Jesus or Barabbas, a lone voice shouted out of the darkness, Barabbas, followed by another standing with them on the opposite side of the oval, Barabbas, and then another and another Barabbas! 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 What happened next, no one had expected. As people all over the room stood up and started shouting Barabbas. And as the words died down, we all just stood there in stunned silence. Ever since then, my perspective on one comment of Jesus 
has never been the same. Jesus answered Pilate, You would have no power over me if it were not given to you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. Traditionally, this is thought to be Judas, because he betrayed Jesus and kissed him in the garden. Others have said, no, 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 that's not right. It was actually Caiaphas, because he had told the Jews and the leaders it was expedient for one man to die than the whole nation. But in that moment at Belvedere, the conviction that struck us all was the truth that by our sin we handed Jesus over, and how easy it was to be carried along with the crowd until that conviction of our need of saving comes. Only the grace of Jesus saves. Now let us follow the rest of the story in John 19. Jesus carried his own cross out of the city to the place called the Skull, which in Aramaic is Golgotha. And there they nailed him to the cross. He was crucified along with two others, one on each side with Jesus in the middle. Pilate had them post a sign over the cross, which was written in three languages, Aramaic, Latin and Greek. Many of the people of Jerusalem read the sign, for he was crucified near the city. The sign stated, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. But the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, You must change the sign. Don't let it say King of the Jews, but rather he claimed to be the King of the Jews. Pilate responded, What I have written will remain. Now when the soldiers crucified Jesus, they divided up his clothes into four shares, one for each of them. But his tunic was seamless, woven from the top to the bottom as a single garment. So the soldiers said to each other, Don't tear it. Let's throw dice to see who gets it. The soldiers did all of this not knowing they fulfilled the scripture that says, They divided my garments among them and gambled for my clothing. Mary, Jesus' mother, was standing next to his cross, along with Mary's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. So when Jesus looked down and saw the disciple he loved standing with her, he said, Mother, look, John will be a son to you. Then he said, John, look, she will be a mother to you. From that day on, John accepted Mary into his home as one of his own family. Jesus knew that his mission was accomplished, and to fulfil the scripture, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of sour wine was sitting nearby, so they soaked a sponge with it and put it on the stalk of hyssop and raised it to his lips. When he had sipped the sour wine, he said, It is finished! Then he bowed his head and surrendered his spirit to God. The Jewish leaders did not want the bodies of the victims to remain on the cross through the next day, since it was the day of preparation for a very important Sabbath. So they asked Pilate's permission to have the victim's legs broken to hasten their death and their bodies taken down before sunset. So the soldiers broke the legs of the two men who were nailed there. But when they came to Jesus, they realised that he had already died. So they decided not to break his legs. But one of the soldiers, 
took a spear and pierced Jesus' side and blood and water gushed out. John testifies to the certainty of what took place. And I write the truth so that you might also believe. For all these things happen to fulfil the prophecies of the scriptures. Not one of his bones will be broken and they will gaze on the one they have pierced. And so we pray. Lord, we gaze upon you today with wonder at the length to which your love took you for us. Like Pilate, when we recognise you as our Lord God for the first time, our soul within us collapses. But thank you, Lord, for the truth that you restore our soul through forgiveness and cleansing. We hear afresh today your words of mercy. Father, forgive them. And from the depth of our souls, we praise and thank you and lift up our voices in adoration to you, Jesus, our Saviour. Amen. <laughs>